Logitech is one of the biggest brands in gaming, with a value of around $14 billion. They've also made some of the most popular gaming mice of all time and have been a prominent brand from when gaming was just a nerd's hobby to now. And when they announced a new product, everyone would hold their breath to see what they'd release. But when they announced the G309, the response wasn't what you'd expect. <coughs> Before we look at why this inanimate object has been on the receiving end of so much hate, we've got to look at the mouse that it might be replacing, and that is the G305. The G305 has more of a cult following, and this cult is a big fan of body modification. There are a load of different mods that the community has come up with just for this mouse, from 3D printing a lighter shell to relocating and reducing the weight of the battery holder. It was also helped by its more affordable price, averaging around $40 on Amazon. If you messed up your mod, eh, it's not going to hurt to buy another one. The G305 is mainly considered a go-to choice for those with smaller hands and or prefer to use a fingertip or claw grip. I think a lot of gamers can agree that there is no better feeling than finding the perfect gaming mouse, and for some the G305 was it. But this mouse came out six years ago, and since then there's been massive advancements in technology. Things like sensor performance, wireless stability, battery life, and even the general components that make up the mouse have been massively improved. It's no surprise that the G305 faithful are dying for their beloved mouse to get a much needed refresh. And then the G309 was released. The G309 is using the Logitech Hero 25K sensor, which features in the original Superlight, which came out four years ago, and it has a maximum polling rate of 1000 Hz. It's also using the Light 4 switches. These are hybrid optical mechanical switches, and this is new technology that features in the Superlight 2 and the refreshed G502X series as well. Powering all this, controversially, is a AA battery battery which comes included. It's an alkaline battery as well, so it's like the heaviest one that they could have gone for. This takes the weight of the mouse to around 88 grams in total. If you use a lithium AAA battery with an adapter, this can go down by around 10 grams. This does have an advantage when it comes to battery life. Logitech says that this can last for 300 hours with constant motion, but they don't say what settings were used to test this. This could be 125 hertz, or it could be be 1000 Hz. Logitech also mentions in their marketing that this mouse also supports Bluetooth. In Logitech's own words, during the design process of the G309, the team created an enhanced palm ball and hip area while creating less undercut on the sides to make it comfortable for palm and claw grip players. So they removed the parts that made the G305 what it is. The sidewalls have been straightened out and it's got a larger and more rounded hump. This does make it better for other grip types, like Logitech said. This is a more homogenized version of the G305. Now I know that the G305 is still available, so if you don't like the G309 you can just buy that, but I don't think it's going to be around for much longer. I have a tinfoil hat theory about why they've changed it, which I'll look at later on, but those that liked the original shape haven't been given an upgraded version, at least one made by Logitech that is. The other part is the removable battery, something that is pretty much redundant in a gaming mouse along with Bluetooth. Internal batteries can charge quickly now. They have a battery life of around 80 plus hours and they are also pretty lightweight. An internal battery could have been added to the G309 and the mouse might have weighed around 70 grams, maybe even less because you have to get rid of all the other stuff that holds that AA battery. I think they went for the removable battery option to sell PowerPlay mouse pads. This is also in my tinfoil hat section. 
And there's another factor, and that is the price of the mouse itself. Logitech described the mouse as the following. Our best tech, which it isn't because it's missing the Hero 2 sensor, which is also your best tech. And a removable battery is technically Duracell's tech. It does have the light force switches, so I'll give them that, but it's also in an affordable package for $79.99. Hey Logitech. $80? is not affordable. Affordable is the average price of the G305 on Amazon, which is, I think, about $40. Or even, I don't know, maybe $52 that a certain company is selling a G305 clone for. Don't worry, I am going to talk about this as well. On the product page for the G309, Logitech mentions their PowerPlay mousepad. Now, this is a charging pad that you place a regular Logitech mousepad on top of. You then get the PowerPlay puck that slots on the underside of the mouse and that charges the mouse wirelessly whilst you play. They mention this on the G309 page seven times and twice it's mentioned as a way to reduce the weight of the mouse to 68 grams when using the PowerPlay mousepad. And that's not all. The PowerPlay mousepad restricts you to a certain size, which is 34 centimeters by 32 centimeters, which is about six centimeters off from a minimum accepted size mousepad for me. Just take a look at their example with the G903. The mouse itself is taken up a huge chunk of space. And finally, this PowerPlay mousepad costs $120. So it's $200 to get a 68 gram G309. I think this is why they've gone for the removable battery. They probably have a load of PowerPlay mousepad stock and they need to get rid of them, or somebody at upper management wants them sold because they generate greater profit margins. It's madness, it really is. Recently, a company called, this is a real name, M Choose, no, M Chose released the G3. This is one of those new Chinese brands that are a bit weird. They have like six versions of the same mouse and there's a table at the bottom of the product page you have to decipher. Literally every mouse in AliExpress has this same layout and they all seem to have garbage names as well. M Chose, WL Mouse, Attack Shark, Ajaz, sounds like a stripper. They also DM'd me in Discord, but in Chinese, so the communication isn't so great. My theory is that Logitech might have had exclusivity or an agreement with the G305 model with an OEM or something, or they know that they cannot stop this clone from being produced. I often see comments and people posting about things like, oh look, it's a super light clone, but it costs just $2 but they're slightly different, they're not exact copies. The G3 is a G305, it's just missing the 05. Which is why I think Logitech's G305 is going to be retired, because a superior version now exists, and Logitech aren't making it. If they did make an upgraded version of the G305, it probably won't be as good as the G3, and that's just going to make them look bad. By removing themselves from the G305 completely, there is now no competition directly for them. They can charge whatever they want. I gave the G309 a really good grinding session, around about 20 hours of playtime or so. And I'm gonna take a look at it as its own thing. So let's get this mouse out on the mouse pad. Nice, okay. First, the mouse does have premium quality, apart from one floor, but everywhere else is superb. As mentioned, the main switches are using Logitech's Light 4 switches, the same ones on the Super Light 2 that I don't like. On the G309 they feel lighter, less rigid, which may be down to the weight removing a bit of that weird springiness I feel with the Super Light 2. The scroll wheel is amazing, the scroll is smooth yet doesn't get caught in the notches, and the click is nice and tactile. Again, it's better than the Super Light 2. The mouse has polish to it, it even has mouse feet that are better than the god awful stock ones used, again, 
on the Super Light 2. In general, there's stuff on this non-flagship mouse that is better than their most expensive esports gaming mouse. I do have one issue though, the back cover is a bit weird. Sometimes it's really tight and difficult to take off for some reason, and also it wobbles, so when I'm playing I can feel it moving slightly against my palm which can be a bit distracting. There is also the battery side of things. The default battery makes this mouse really bottom heavy, and it's very distracting when you first use it, but I swapped it out to a lithium AAA battery with an adapter instead. Regrettably, some rather glaring downsides that could have been completely avoided has turned the G309 from a product with potential into an overpriced mid-mouse. And it's another glaring example of how a company that was known for innovation and providing the best products for its customers has become reliant on its brand value as well as using esports teams, streamers and influencers to sell mediocre and overpriced products to the masses that don't know any better. Only buy if it's on sale for less than $60. Come on, you've got to subscribe for that. Also, if you want to take a look at some good wireless mice, there's a video on screen now.